imagine an entrepreneurship and business and technology coding program inside prison. Who does that? Yet, here we are today in Oklahoma at Mabel Bassett Correctional Facility opening our 15th classroom. In 2010, I was invited in to speak to a group of men in San Quentin State Prison about business and entrepreneurship. Uh, I run a venture capital firm in San Francisco, and I had a friend who was doing some mentoring there, and she asked me to come in and talk to the men. What I expected was very different from what I saw and experienced. Um, I experienced men who were really motivated, passionate about creating a better life after they served their time, and were just looking for a pathway. When we first began the program, we were strictly an entrepreneurship program, but what we learned, even though our students were, as they returned to society, were being hired by companies in our business network, is they didn't have a very specific, definable skill. And as we all know, by 2020, it's predicted there will be a shortfall of one million software engineers. So we thought we'd set out to try teaching front-end software engineering inside correctional facilities. I want to share with you that just a few short years ago, two years ago to be exact, I was in the same situation as you. I was incarcerated and wondering, what am I going to do with my life when this incarceration is over? I was incarcerated for 12 years, and I was in the very first cohort of the last mile in San Quentin State Prison. And I went through the program, graduated the program, uh, went home, got a job working as a software engineer, uh, and eventually ended up working um, at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. You know, certain things that you can do in life, and it's a badge of honor, right? You, you're proud of it. Being the most incarcerated women of, of women in, in America, ain't nothing to be proud of. It's not anything to be proud of. And, so, and, and the most incarcerated people in general, the amount of incarceration, it's nothing to be proud of. We started um, looking at, at places to make a difference. Oklahoma, we know, is, is uh, voters are ready here for criminal justice reform. The legislature is ready for criminal justice reform. Um, you've, got, you've got the number one incarcerator of women, and I thought, why not bring the last mile into a women's facility and uh, give the women here a chance at having a really good life um, after incarceration. And you guys just take advantage of this because uh, there is a great hope and a future for you, even though uh, you know your past, don't let that define you uh, because you can move forward. And I tell people all the time, you're just a few right decisions away uh, from really moving the needle and being back in society, uh, taking care of your families and productive members of society. Well, I was chosen, it's 18 of us to um, do the computer coding program. It's just an opportunity to learn coding, to uh, learn web design, to, oh my God, it's just it's amazing. This is bigger than I actually even thought it was. This is a lot. <laughs> this is giving me an opportunity to be painted in such a different light. I don't have to worry about whether they're going to see me as a felon. My work can speak for itself. My, um, the ability to fix or be the answer to their problem will actually be my ticket and I don't have to worry about being a felon. That doesn't have to be the first thing on the list. Since its inception, the last mile has zero percent recidivism amongst its returns. It works like a virtual internet because if you're going to write HTML, you got to have an internet. Right. But they have no access to any other type of internet, no Facebook, no source of my, yeah. yeah. As a software engineer, your best friend on the outside is Google. We don't have Google inside, so we basically had to create a repository of content that our students could access. Uh, we do have a simulated environment, so they did, do have code editors and they can practice coding inside, all in simulators. Um, and we update the curriculum on a daily basis. Uh, we have our learning management system that has all the content in there. But at the end of the day, we had to create as close to a simulated environment as we could. And it took a while to build. It took us about a year to get the initial platform built. And we keep iterating on that as well. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce Chastity Schultz. We all know that beyond these walls right now, our country is not very felon friendly. This program will give us that chance. The Last Mile believes they can change that for us. 
giving us a chance to prove that we are valuable, even as felons. We want to show our communities and our families that our addictions and the bad choices from our past do not define us. Our progress from today through the program, our success in the future, that will define us. Most of the women here have a long morose history of economic difficulties that have led them into incarceration. Some, multiple incarcerations, because they did not have the training, the education, or someone to give them a chance. This is that chance, not only to change as an individual, but to aid generational changes as well. This proud but pragmatic dreamer you see today will succeed. Yeah. From all of us yeah. to all of you. from all of us, all of the new students, to all of you here supporting this dream of the last mile, thank you. Yeah. We will succeed. Yeah.